We have two solar storms that are on their way to Earth and could give us a good chance for Aurora this week. One of those storms was slingshotted up from the south in a beautiful display. Those stories and more in the news this week. Despite the sun's activity being pretty flare quiet this week, we have managed to launch two solar storms that have been in the Earth's strike zone. The first one launched on the 22nd. It's this filament. You can see it here. And it released a little bit in the south, and it kind of slingshotted its way up to the north in a beautiful display. That one should be hitting us here in the next day or so. And then that opened up this little mini coronal hole. And as you can see, as that rotates in, there's another filament that lets go. That one is also now launched and has been on its way towards Earth. It could graze us here here right around the 29th. Switching to our M flare threat meter, you can see we've been extremely flare quiet over the past week or so. We've stayed well below the seafloor. Around uh, the 21st, though, we did start picking up a little bit with region 2454 and 2457. They started showing some signs of life, but we stayed, we've managed to stay below the M flare threat level, and things are now beginning to quiet back down. So you amateur radio operators should be pretty happy. It doesn't look like we have anything like a radio blackout anywhere in our future. Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see the last time we had any activity at all was back on the 19th, and we only had it for a few hours. Since then, things have kind of quieted down and quieted down and continued to quiet down to the point where now we're having a hard time even seeing anything other than electronic noise on some of our magnetometers on the ground. So this is horrible news for you poor Aurora folk because you guys have not been able to see Aurora even at high latitude places. But that should change here in the next day or so. When we get these solar storms hitting, it should bump up our activity. So uh, expect a little bit more noise on the bands and expect some good chances for Aurora. Focusing in on the first of the two solar storms that are headed our way, this is Enlil. It's our prediction model. This is NASA's version of the model. We're looking down at the North Pole of the Sun, and here's Earth over here. You can see that solar storm coming out, and it looks like it's going to go pretty much east of us, but it will give us a grazing passage. It looks like right about early on the 26th. Uh, it's also embedded in some fast solar wind, which hopefully will compress it and give it a little bit more of a kick, and we'll have some decent aurora chances starting around the 26th. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And you can see all that brightness on the east limb. Those are regions that are rotating into Earth view now and in the next day or so, but they've been reasonably sleepy, so we're not expecting a lot of uh, flare, big flare threats from them at all. After that, things are pretty much dominated by coronal holes, so we're probably going to get some more fast wind here starting in about a week or so. We also have this other coronal hole that actually has some activity above it. We've actually seen a couple solar storms be launched from this region, and that will be rotating into Earth view probably in about 10 days. Returning to the disk, you can see region 2454 has now rotated off of the west limb, leaving region 2457 as the only hope of an M-class player right now. But it's pretty much fizzled out, and it's not growing like we'd expect it to. So that's probably not an issue. And then the other regions that we have have also been pretty quiet. We won't see any other regions rotating onto the disk here for probably the next week or so. So everything's going to continue to be reasonably flare quiet, but we do have enough solar flux to allow you amateur radio operators operators to have decent propagation uh, here through the next week. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating that solar storm that's going to hit us hopefully on the 26th. So NOAA is giving us about a 40% chance of a, a major storm at high latitudes. At mid-latitudes, we're only expecting about a 10% chance of a minor storm uh, with unsettled conditions, and this may be a little bit of an underestimation. We're hoping for a little bit more than that. After that, thing should settle down a little bit, but then again on the 29th, we do have that other solar storm that has a chance of grazing us, so we might see activity pick up yet again. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, since region 2454 has now rotated off of the west limb, the only thing we've got left is region 2457, and it's not showing many signs of life. So NOAA's only giving us about a 10 to 15 percent chance of an M-class flare over the next three days, and that risk will probably continue to diminish over the coming week as these new regions that are rotating into Earth view really don't look like they're going to be M-class players at all. So you amateur radio operators should like that. We do still have enough solar flux so that the band propagation should remain good through the week despite the fact we have no M-flare players on the disk.
So despite the incredibly quiet conditions right now, it really is the quiet before the storm. We have two solar storms that have been launched in the Earth strike zone. One should hit Earth right around the 26th. The second one should hit Earth right around the 29th, which will give you aurora photographers a lot to be thankful for over this holiday weekend if you uh, happen to be in America. And uh, you amateur radio operators and GPS operators, it might be a little bit of a bumpy ride here through this uh, holiday weekend. It's probably not going to be that big a deal because these storms really aren't that strong. Wrong, but after this is over, then things will quiet back down and you'll be in the clear. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.